Hello everyone, welcome to a 5 minute scientific computing talk. In this video, we will discuss different levels of understanding marching cube algorithm. Isosurface might be one of the most common algorithms for analyzing the scientific data. In this video, we try to decompose it into multiple levels to explain how to understand and use the marching cube algorithm to achieve the isosurface step by step. Specifically, we will go through every step of the marching cube algorithm and we will also use a VTK at the implementation library to understand the details of the marching cube algorithm. The goal of the first level is simple. We just need to know how to use marching cube algorithm from the perspective of programming. We try to figure out what it can do, what is the input and output of the algorithm. Here, we try to generate a data source from the pair of view, such as VivLat1 showing the figure bulb, and then click the contour button then click the apply. By this way, the contour surface with specific value is created, which is showing the figure. If we try to do the isosurface operation by ourselves with the CPP code, we may first save the WebLat data into the disk firstly. You may get the sample file here. We then need to load the image file and generate the VTK image data in C++ program. Please check the video below to see how to read the VTK image file by XML Reader if you are not familiar with the VTK data read and write operation. If you are not familiar with the precise to build the program that uses VTK library based on CMIC, you may check all kinds of examples here. We also list the link below this video. With this example code, we can get the image data and print out all its arrays. We could see that there is a field value associated with every data point. So, the input data of the marching cube is the typical image data, and the field data is a, a, attached to the image point. The next step is try to connect the data with the marching cube filter and get the rendered figures. The code example listed here inserts several isosurface values and then output a polygonal data object that describes these values. We may also render the existing VTK object directly based on online example. Here, we just try to write out the VTK polygon data by the VTK file and render it on the pair view. In summary, this example shows that we input the VTK image data and the filter returns the VTK polygonal data. The above code and associated image data can be found here, and we also list the link below this video. From the example shown in level 1, we have some ideas about how to use the VTK library to execute the marching cube algorithm. The goal of the level 2 is try to understand the key ideas behind this algorithm and how it is implemented. We use two references in this video. The first is the VTK document online about the marching cube algorithm. The second reference is the original paper that describes the marching cube algorithm a high-resolution three-dimensional surface construction algorithm. Let's look at some core ideas behind this algorithm together. We use two questions at the outline for the marching cube method. First one is how to map the original range, which is the grid into the format that we can compare with the threshold value. The second is how to map the compared results into a new data representation, namely the polygonal data. And for the marching cube algorithm, the input contains the regular grid such as an image and a threshold value that we try to extract from the image. The output is an unstructured grid such as the polygonal data. For the convenience of the explanation, we use the 2D grid as the example here. The grid data can be both in 2D or 3D in practice as shown in the figure. The image data is constructed by structured points and edge. We select out one cell from them. In this example, the scala is bounded with each vertex of the grid. If we assume every pixel in this cell contains a particular scala value, but we only know the exact scala value at four corner points, how could we draw a line to split it? The naive idea is to use the interpolation. We can find the particular point among the edge and then draw a line as an approximation such as the example shown in case 1 and case 8 of this figure. The position on the edge can be selected based on interpolation. 
This is a simple idea to map the scalar value into the topology representation. If our 2D phase contains multiple small seals, we just need to go through each seal one by one and execute a ball operations. We can get a contour around the threshold value we input. We can get high granularity contour if we use more seals. If we consider any scalar value and a customized contour value we want to extract, it is either larger than a contour value or smaller than contour value. If we use the topological relationship to understand it, it can be either outside the contour phase or inside the contour phase. By this way, we build a connection between the comparison of scalar value and the topology, topological positions. For every grid seal, there are four points, and given one threshold, there are two to the power of four equals to 16 cases in total. The figure 6.5 of the VTK book shows all 16 cases. The simple way is to use a digit number to represent all cases. We basically need four digits that represent each point. If the particular digit is 1, it means the value is larger than a threshold. If it is 0, it means the value is smaller than a threshold. Then we can build a case table. Each combination corresponds with a case shown in figure 6. If we extend it into 3D cases, there are 8 points and totally 256 cases. If we use multiple steps to express the precise ball, the algorithm can be described as follows. We select a seal, then calculate the inside or outside state of each vertex of the seal. We create an index by storing the binary state of each vertex in a separate bit. We then use the index to look at the topological state of the seal in a case table. Finally, we calculate the counter location by the interpolation for each edge in the case table. You may need to read the original paper to get more details, but I believe you can understand the main ideas of the margin cube algorithm till this step. For the level 3, we try to further dive into the margin cube algorithm. We try to figure it out how it is implemented. Let's take the VTK library as an example to explain it in details. The VTK library contains different implementations of the marching cube algorithms with different efficiency, such as VTK Quanter, VTK Marching Cube, and VTK Flat Edge. We mainly look at the VTK Marching Cube in this article. The best way to understand the code is to run it and add some print log to see what's going on here. This is the example we use to understand the marching cube algorithm in this article. We basically copy-paste original header and source file from the VTK library only for the marching cube algorithm, and we get our own version of the marching cube algorithm and compile it separately. By adding all kinds of logs, we can basically figure out the main logic of the algorithm. It is also a good practice to understand other VTK filters by this way. We list some points for understanding the source code of the VTK margin cube.c++. We extract the input data here, and we have the extracted Flagala array. Although it is a 1D array, it represents the 3D grid data logically. This partial worker approach is the way to execute for the for loop in the VTK library. You may refer to this video about the dispartial worker approach to do the VTK array operation. This is a place where the worker is called, and the core operation of the worker is a three-layered for loop. We try to go through our points and select different seals with each point as the started position. The S array here contains the scalar value of each selected seal, and the PTS represents the coordinates for selected work seal in three-dimensional space. With this key data structure, we start to look at case table and map the comparison results between the scalar value and the threshold value into a particular topological shape. The index of the case table is calculated here. The VTK library lists all 256 cases here. The non-zero value represents the index of the edge that we need to intersect with. There are at most five triangles for the margin cube case for the walk seal and we need 15 indexes to represent it. The last one is a termination digit. 
although we can simplify 256 cases into 16 cases. However, from the programming perspective, all kinds of rotation is error-prone, so we use the strategy of space to time to make it more simple. Then we go through each edge where there is intersection and calculate the coordinates of the intersect points based on interpolation. Then we use the locator to find the particular points based on the indices. Uh, at last, we insert new point into the polygonal data based on the next seal function. The contents in level 4 are out of the topic of current video. You may need to know some optimization topics such as calculating the gradient and consider how to merge shapes between different voxel, etc. You may even try to implement whole algorithm by yourself using different underlying libraries as needed. Besides, there are more efficient margin cube implementations based on parallel parent primitives such as, such as VTK Flying Edge 3D. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe our channel if the contents are helpful for you. See you next time.